Welcome to Sunday Money, brought to you by O'Reilly's Auto Parts. O'Reilly. That's what I said. And Hercule Tires. I don't know. I don't know where the S is on either of those. O'Reilly's Auto Parts. No. No. O'Reilly Auto Parts. And Hercules. Right. Hercules, Hercules has the S. Tires. Hercules Tires. You'd think I would know that after two years. Well... Should we try it again? You think you would learn a lot of things over two years, but that hasn't been the case. Welcome to Sunday Money, brought to you by O'Reilly's Auto. Shit. Somebody else do it. No, that was good. Okay. No, I was not right. Welcome to Sunday Money, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts and Hercules Tires. Got it that time. Good job. Hello. Yeah. Well, here we are. Good <sighs> well, guys. It's taken us 40 minutes to get this thing going. Yeah. Technology is a bitch. Yep. And Lauren's eating chips and queso. Yes, I am. At 10 30. <laughs> Guys, I don't have any more groceries. I'm out. I'm low on groceries too. I got to make a run. I'm, I'm, low, I'm out of beer, completely out. I usually, I'm usually pretty stocked up. I opened the fridge last night and I was like, oh no. It's a bad place to be. Are, are we the only podcast still going? Is anybody else podcasting? I think Door Bumper Clear is still doing it. We're, we're the Listen last. Listen that little, that little baby. Yeah, he, he's right over there. He's rooting him too. Is, is that the baby? No. I got this going on. I got somebody calling me. I'm Before you look tired. I when I was when it was just normal life. Well, guys, uh, what would you like to talk about today on our podcast? There's only about two topics that okay. anybody's doing. We're either talking about video game or watching Netflix or Amazon Prime. I think that's the only thing, two things people are doing. Come here. Uh, I, I actually, um, I painted my garage, and that goes to show you how bored I am, because I hate painting. <laughs> in the five years that I've lived in my house, I have not touched the garage, so I painted my garage and organized it. That's how bored I am. Well, have you done anything productive there? Yeah. Like what? I, wa I downloaded the Motor Trend app, and I watched all the episodes. I'm caught up. <laughs> Oh, why? It was so good. Hi, Poppy. I'm a big Austin Dillon fan what now. Fire, hey, what fire suit was I wearing in the credits after the final episode? The orange one. <laughs> what, what one? Hmm? Oh, that little cabbage patch to pipe down. <laughs> I'm Lauren, know. give her a bottle. This They're is a disaster. This is a disaster. <laughs> but we can't stop. We got to give the people what they want. That's right. Poppy. Poppy. Pipe down. <laughs> no talking. So, Corey, you do look exhausted. Are you not sleeping? I feel like, I feel like uh, your cell phone, like when you just plug it in for like five minutes and you pull it out, then you plug it in <laughs> and then you pull it out and then you plug it in for like five minutes at a time. You might get your battery incrementally increased, but it's not like it's gonna, it just dwindles your entire battery life down. That's what we have going on right now because I plug in for 25 minutes and then I get woken up by that little guy. Are you, uh, are you guys on a schedule? Were you like taking turns? Well, Kelly, Kelly pumps or breastfeeds every three, 12, three, six, nine. Mm -hmm. So, I wake up, I stay up with him between the nine and the midnight. So I'll change and feed him the bottle at nine, change and feed him the bottle at midnight, bring him upstairs. And usually he goes from sleeping from about 10 until midnight to like, ping, like a Furby at midnight. And he's wide <laughs> awake for like an hour and a half. Uh, so then Kelly will sleep with him on her, sleep with him on her chest. Uh, 
until like two, then he kind of sleeps for about 20 minutes and then it's time to feed him, wake him again. She's been great enough to let me sleep through the three o'clock. And then we get to the six and sometimes I wake up for that one and feed him there and change him, try to go back to bed, wake up for the nine and then just wake up like a zombie. Make so coffee. Sometimes we've seen it in the past where sometimes drivers have their newborns at the racetrack in the motorhomes. How do they do that? I was, I was thinking about Tyler Reddick when he, brought, he kept bringing Bo to the track like the first couple of weeks, and I'm like, dude, I wouldn't. I don't know if that's smart or dumb or whatever, but dude, a, a newborn is so much work, man. And I couldn't imagine being cooped up in the motorhome with like, you don't have all your stuff, you don't you know, like organize at the racetrack, noisy. And you're not sleeping. I would rather just leave Kelly and the baby at home. Like, you just stay. I will go work. I'll be back on Sunday night. I don't know why people bring their infant babies. Well, I guess it's just to show them off and see if they can get on that national anthem shop. Oh, mm -hmm. we need another one of these. But Levi won't be coming to the track. I doubt he might come to the track later this year, like late later. Uh, like when we go back racing in Christmas time. When we go back racing, it in August. June. I think it'll be the beginning of June. But from everything I'm hearing, Marcus Smith is dead set on firing off the Coke 600. <laughs> you you know why, right? Huh? You know why that is, probably right? Because he needs to the money. Money. Because his pop pop probably said, "We haven't missed a Memorial Day in thirty hundred years. <laughs> We're not missing one now." Well, that's probably true, but and I would be a little bit more skeptical and a little bit more uh, I guess questionable. We're gonna go racing sooner than later if Jim France did have a billion dollar. Pending, or not pending, but uh, when he took all the tracks private, took yeah. that private, he he is over the skis for a lot of money. And the only way he recoups that money is running all the races and getting the TV money. So nobody wants to go racing more than the guy who runs the sport, right? It's a little bit different of a model than F1. Right? F1, their t TV deal is structured different. And the Tracks just get a little bit, and they get the front and back gates. Where NASCAR owns the tracks, and that's the only way they get the TV money. So that's lame. Um, it's it's a hefty sum of millions, tens of millions of dollars each and every race if we don't run. So nobody's more incentivized to get those races going than the president of our sport, which is good. Well, Jim is the president. How do you feel about racing without fans? You don't know. The only time you notice fans is when driver intros, which it would it would kind of suck racing. You know, I, I guess what you consider the marquee bench, the Coke Six Hundred, Bristol maybe. I mean, I, I would imagine the first ten of our races will be without fans. Corey, this is going to be your life. She's hyperactive. You got to put on little baby bums for her. Well, at least, at least, at least, at least, at least ain't got no internet. Yeah, so it's uh, it's my life now. It's just sleep when you can, eat when you can, and then just try to survive for the next day. That's what. Corey, are you touching your microphone? What? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is comical at this point. I'm going to pull a bubble. I'm going to quit today. This. Is... I don't know what that was. What happened? We just heard like a lot of static. Like it sounds like I don't even know. Like shit. How did John, John and Emily get the entire cast of Hamilton to sound perfect on Zoom? And we can't get well, through. Obviously, obviously, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> but that was, dude. Those. That was a good news show. <laughs> Uh. 
I'm tired. Yeah, we're all tired. So what's going on in the in the world? Daryl, get back on camera. Are you rage quitting? <laughs> Wave the white flag. We can't use this. This is not usable. <laughs> 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 oh, I like the first week was like a good podcast we all had our stuff together the second week was like pretty good but the ending was a little rough and now this is what the third week is like this is the fucks meter yeah zero okay let's you can edit some of this right Alexa here's the bottom, here's the bottom peg okay let's try again Lauren <laughs> <laughs> what? How is Poppy? Let's hear about your life. And then we'll get into e-racing. Well, she learned how to clap this week. Poppy, can you clap? Clap. Yeah. Clap. Yay, Poppy. Yay, good job, Poppy. It's about the small wins, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's what we learned this week. We've got two teeth coming in on the bottom. Uh-huh. And that's it. That's not it. I heard you've been cooking. I've been trying. What is Andrew lucky enough to get to eat from your delicacies? Well, a lot of chicken. That's really about all I'm good at. Corey, she's been but burning I've, meals in the kitchen. Yeah, I burnt last night with our, our, our dinner. I made like, I fried up like some chicken strips. I like breaded them and did that. I made some zucchini for me to eat. I made some noodles, and then I put some crescent rolls in the oven. And I burnt two, two out of the four items that we had for dinner. So, Lauren, it, this is not my thing. When is the last time you cried? The last time I did what? Cried. Oh, I don't know. I'm not really a crier. I know, I, but I'm wondering if like everyone's just like completely changing. In this video, it's stressful right now. I'm still do I'm still doing okay, but ugh. it's it's tiring. And you're trying to figure out how I haven't been outside in like three weeks, and I got a t-shirt tan still. Do you That's mind, yeah. Corey? Are you getting any like Corey time at all? Yeah, Kelly gives me some time. Uh, she has plenty. She said I have yeah. plenty. Exactly. Um, We're worried about your well-being, Corey. I have more than Kelly does, no doubt. I've been riding the mountain bike some. Every time I go out, I crash the shit out of it. I crashed so hard last time I bent the rear wheel like a taco, so I didn't get <laughs> for it. Careful. I thought I broke my foot. It was kind of bruised up, but it's not broken. It's good. I could walk on it. Oh, um, and I have somewhat of a gym set up in my basement, or not my basement, in my garage. I got a jump rope, kettlebells, a lot of stuff from Onnit. I do that. Not a whole lot of motivation, dog. I just want to sit on the couch and literally do nothing. I uh, I was on the couch doing nothing, watching a documentary about a Barlam and Bailey circus in the the day. And I got a text message from you saying, turn on the iRacing. You got to check out this iRacing. So I stopped my amazing PBS documentary and I turned on the iRacing. How many laps do you think I made it? 10. It depends. If it was a caution lap, I bet you they make three, three green flag laps for every caution lap. So you probably watched seven. I watched 25 laps and six cautions. What are we doing? What is this this madness? Well, Bristol wasn't the best gauge of of that. That's why everybody's asking, when are you doing I race? When are you gonna do the I race? This is how the invitations have been. Here. When they raced at Homestead, the first one. I didn't get the invite. And even if they did invite me, I probably wouldn't have obliged because I had this guy to help feed and change and i didn't want to spend 60 hours a week on it like denny timmy hill garrett smith lee dale jr and everybody else who ran halfway decent at it next week following week texas comes up 
Mm -hmm. um, I didn't express any interest. Uh, people at NASCAR asked me if I wanted to do it, even though it's not NASCAR's call per se, it's iRacing's call. Uh, well, hold on. That's important. I don't think people understand that, Corey, because there's a lot of talk online that, you know, people don't really understand. They think drivers are drivers, so they should all get to go and race. And NASCAR must not be letting people race, but that's not really exactly how it works. So, Matt, so I race and paid NASCAR to use their markers and branding. So NASCAR only has this much to do with it. So I race and it's a new I race. And um, and iRacing is the gatekeeper uh, right now on who can race and who can't. And, okay. you know, they're a little bit, um, I guess, due to the people who have been on the platform and who have been singing their praises for the last 10 years, rightfully so. Um, and then they open it up for some people who have a couple. So they went to Bristol which I was open to do because I like Bristol. Uh -huh. I wouldn't mind spending maybe 10 hours practicing, which is still a lot. That's still a lot. Yeah. I haven't done anything for 10 hours this week. That's the problem, right? Like that's the problem within this division of half the people who love it and think it's the greatest thing ever. And the other half of people say, well, the only way to get good at it is spend time on it, and I would rather spend time with my family uh, because, A, I'm not getting paid for it, and, B, there's really not any circumstances if I don't do it. So why would I spend a time when I can be spending time doing something else? Right. And there is a chasm between this side and this side, right? That's a, that's a problem. There's also a chasm between the fans of – um, and this is the greatest thing ever. You can't say anything in between because you, you're made out to look silly, whether that be a driver or somebody in the industry or even a fan, you get blasted by the cult, which is the, this e-gaming. That's why my favorite gift to use right now is when anybody says something that's like a video game, like Bubba did in his tweet, I put the little South Park, if that has like everybody going rabble 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 because that's what everybody who's piling on the nonsense in the twitter mentions that's what they're doing they're just rabble along there's a arca event what there was an arca event and bob pockris said for those asking about okay, notes hang on. Hang on. Hang on. i don't want to move on from that so being that they wanted to shorten the field up for the cup race because they knew it was going to be a shit show because that bristles hard on the game and the they call it net code net code is the amount of space that you have to give to another car before you wreck them like you think you're you think you're off of them a foot but in reality in re reality the software or the internet thinks that you're hitting them and that's why you see like <laughs> and the car flips over 10 times in the air that's because the internet lag uh, and net code, they call it. So it takes a little bit of experience on the platform to understand net code on what, how close you can get to somebody and race them without wrecking them. And obviously, Clint Boyer uh, does not understand net code or Daniel Suarez for that matter. Um, but <clears throat> where was I going? Oh, so they wanted to they wanted to take their thirty guys who have been doing it the last the first two weeks, right? Like we these guys have been doing it. They at least they have a little bit of experience. We're going to go with these guys because we don't want a complete wreck fest, which we all see how that turned out. Then they took the other guys, every other Tom, Dick, and Harry, and put them in a Saturday night race in a and m car, which I got the invite to that, which I respectfully reclined, declined. declined. <laughs> I, respect, I respectfully reclined in my couch and watched it on the internet. <laughs> Uh, I guess. Well, if you're declining offers to race, why are you turning in to watch? Because here's the thing. I wanted to race against the cup guys who have families and don't want to spend the time to get good at it versus racing these 14-year-old kids and 16-year-old kids that spend 10 hours a day on it. 
because a cup race would be a heck of a lot easier because the guys aren't spending time on it because they don't they have better things to do. That's the race I wanted to be in. I didn't want to race against professionals. I wanted to race against the guys who were taking it light harder. But you did watch. I did watch. Why not? I got to support it a little bit. I, I support. I support the people on NASCAR's end that are putting the effort, like Tim Clark and everybody else on his team that are putting the effort towards it to push the thing along and to get it out there and keep us relevant. I respect that. The I just wish that there was some sort of a block of time of practice. Uh, I wish that they literally would pull the car and pull the track Sunday morning and let the cup guys practice for an hour and a half rather than letting Will Byron run 10 races throughout the week and spend – it's probably two and a half hours every race, so you do the math, 25 hours. At least he spent practicing for Bristol, and obviously – Hey, guess what? It paid off because he won the race. Uh, I don't. I just don't want to spend the time doing that, man. It's uh, there's no incentive for me to do it beyond just getting my partners on TV. That's the only reason why I would be doing it. But it's cool and all that. But we'll see how it transpires over the next couple of weeks. Fox wanted to do another race this weekend. It uh, so they're all gung ho about it. Man, we got to keep the momentum up. We got to keep going. So they put the idea up in the group chat and it was, uh, it went over like a fart in church. Nobody wanted to do it. Um, <laughs> so we're going to have like four or five guys doing it. Problem is I was going to have to do it because I, since I haven't done the first three, I would have had to do the, that one just to get, couldn't have said no because my partners are sitting here asking me why I'm not doing it. Luckily a little bit ago it got canceled because nobody's going to do it. So that's where we're at. We have Easter off of video games. Wow. That's the yeah, one. but I'm yeah. so confused, Corey. I mean, I'm not criticizing you, but I'm not following what you're saying. It, just because your partners want you to race doesn't mean you can just go race. It doesn't. So even if your partners want you to and they would have raced this weekend, you're saying I race and still might not have let you race. I got the invite for this week. So you did get um, in. I did this week, yeah. But last week, the invite to the race would never happen. So we'll see if I get the invite to next week to Richmond. They're going to, in the email, they said that they're going to continue the schedule as is. So we, I think we go to Richmond, Talladega, and on. So they will be following that schedule rather than picking and choosing different racetracks, which I think would be cool, but it's their own deal. So, but I would like to get in on it. And just because I think that I'm a little bit better at it than I probably give myself credit for, mm -hmm. and uh, I need to get I need to get go fast and the partners that have been helping out in real life on TV because that's the only way I'm on TV right now. Yeah, I racing and Fox. You you can't just go on like uh, Race Hub or NASCAR America. Um, I could, but I don't get I don't get the invitations for this stuff either. Huh. Do you want to comment on the ARCA deal, or do you want to talk about it? About how, since there's no Fords in it, that Ford wouldn't let any of their drivers drive it? Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, I, I think that one. You can go in the trading paints and paint it like a Ford, but I think that's a little bit, I don't know, outlandish to regulate what cars we can and can't drive in video game land, but that's neither here nor there. Speaking of Ford drivers, a Ford driver ended up in hot water over a rage quit during the event, and he happened to be... He's a Chevy driver. Bubba's a Chevy no, but Clint is, Clint is a Ford driver. Oh. Yeah, because a Ford driver caused all these wrecks, Bubba, your old high school classmate, quits mid-game, and all hell breaks loose. Well, you can set the context up a little better. There was a wreck the first or second lap. Bubba got all tore up, so he used one of his quick resets that you get to up. He gets halfway gathered back up, and he's racing with Clint. He catches Clint. Clint comes off four to merges like he wasn't there. Gets banged up. Clint saves it. Then he wrecks him on purpose. Clint does. 
So now Bubba's out of recess. And he's also pissed off that he got wrecked on purpose, rightfully so. So I don't necessarily agree with quitting. I think you quit when your car is upside down on fire, but he just got mad enough to where he just said, I don't take, this is why I don't take this stuff serious. Peace out, more or less, I guess. Which raised up a whole nother, uh, then he got on Twitter, right? Said, man, I, I'm getting so much hate for quitting a video game. And then video game in all caps, which that's when I put my little gift to us. Hey, get, hey, Bubba, they're going to come for you. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Of course they did because they're very vocal about it being a simulation, not a video game. It, you can call it both. By definition, it is a video game and a simulation. So it just depends whatever you wanted to call it. Um, so Blue Emu, who probably gave him, I don't know. I don't know if it was a team deal. I don't know the specifics of the deal, but let's just say it was five grand. Blue Emu gave him five grand. They essentially got shorted five grand because they only were in the race for 25 laps, right? So they were rightfully mad. And I don't know who tweeted it within Blue Emu's account, but it said, hey, good to know where you're at. Um, we like supporting drivers, not quitters, which that was that was pretty stern. I was I, I had the same look on my face as you did, Lauren. I was like, oh, sweet. Now, this is where we're at as a society right now. We're losing sponsors via Twitter threads. But – they have a point, right? They, they spent money um, for the whole broadcast. I guess you can say they were using it as a commercial, planning on that Bubba's 43 car got on TV, and he withdrew from the race less than a quarter of the way in, so they felt like they probably got shorter on their investment. There's both well, sides. They probably got more exposure because of this. They, than they, would have. they definitely did. They had, there's more articles written about them than ever, so – you know, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you can look at it like that side. All right. Which, which avenue of sponsorship got them more publicity sponsoring Landon Castle. Right. Or sponsoring Bubba Wallace and Bubba Rage quits. And then everybody talks about them. Right. I'm going to say they got mentioned way more being affiliated with Bubba than I did with Landon, even though Landon goes above and beyond doing everything for him. He's got the backdrop. He's got the twitch with the blue emu. He's got a blue emu sticker across his head. He's rubbing blue emu on every joint in his body. That just goes to show the pull that some of these guys have, whether or not it's negative publicity, you're still getting talked about. People are still like, Hey, what's blue emu? Right. Old people cream. They rub on their joints when they get a little sore. <laughs> I bet you the sales went way up for Bubba Rage Quinn. Hey, maybe, Ever think about this? Maybe it was planned. Maybe it was staged rage quit. Oh no. Of course a conspiracy theorist now. Yeah. Maybe maybe it was an inside job. Clint wrecked him on purpose. He rage quit. Everybody's talking about it. Blue emu flying off the shelf. Now would be a great time to mention that Blue Emu is a great partner of MRN. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be on the hood. They're gonna be on the hood of my car for the real Bristol. So, oh, good. So, I love it. I, I don't, so I, I can assure you this: I won't be quitting in the real Bristol race. Come hell or high water, where I'm be pushing that thing across the finish line, rubbing blue you among my calves. <laughs> Push it. Wow. Okay. Jeff Gluck did a poll, which he always does after real races and cartoon races. <laughs> and he said, was virtual Bristol a good race? 54.9% said yes. That trails in comparison to the other pro invitational series races by a significant amount. Homestead had 93% of the votes say it was a good race and Texas 89% of the race fans that were polled said it was a good race. Do you think the novelty is worn off or Bristol is just a hard sell on iRacing? Well, iRacing knew going in that it was gonna be a rough race. Cause it's just hard, it's a hard track. You don't have the feel of the car. 
can't really lean on anybody. Um, and there's just not enough space for 30 inexperienced iRacers on that track. It's odd to me. Actually, it's not odd because it makes perfect sense why the mile and a half tracks are getting the best ratings of what is considered a good race, more so than the short tracks because they can turn down the dirty air settings of real life uh, in iRacing, right? So they all the, the only bad part about mile and a half racing is their dirty air and the inability to race close to somebody. So if you can turn those factors down and you can ride – run right behind somebody and you can hit them and not lose the nose and not get arrow loose when you're running side by side with somebody, of course that's going to make for a good race. So I think that has to all be taken into account when you are plumping it into the same category because it's inevitable when we go back to Texas in the fall or when we do a double header and whenever they move the weekends around, I heard they're putting Texas in Michigan's, I don't, they already released that tentative schedule or whatever, but, they're putting Texas in Michigan's first race. So whenever we go to Texas, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is going to compare our real race to the iRacing race. Oh, well, the, the real race only got 65% yes versus the iRacing is 90-whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Because you can take all the bad things that happen in real life, dirty air, tire wear, aero loose, all that sort of stuff, you can take it out. Turn that little bar down. Hmm. There you go. There you have it. You can add grip to the racetrack. You can add a grip to the bottom. You can add a grip to the top. It's a – the only thing that's the same when it comes to the racing product is the actual look of the racetrack. They can change grip levels. They can change tire grip levels to make it whatever show they want it to. So I don't think that it should be on the same grade scale as what we grade real life races. That's That's my – opinion can they do old cars could we do like darlington in the 70s dude i would love to uh so they have legacy tracks which is tracks that they scanned before the repave they're they're building north wilkesboro they clean north wilkesboro up and dale jr went out there with his little bulldozer and all that cleaned it up so i race and can can scan it so at least that track's gonna uh, be on there i think i heard june um and I, hopefully they can build a uh like a 1987 Monte Carlo, an old school cup car on bias by tires to go along with that. I think they're working on that. That would be pretty cool. But right now we don't have anything that we could really do like throwbacks, like old tracks. That would be, a, that'd be pretty fun to watch you guys race the seventies cars. For sure. They don't have a seventies car belt. They have, I think, like I said, they're working on like a late eighties Monte Carlo or Buick Grand National, something like that. The old boxy cars. Mm -hmm. It would be pretty sweet to drive an old Dodge Charger like Richard Petty with a big fin on the back. That was pretty sweet. Did you talk to Bubba post quit? I did. I did talk to him. I called him. I'm like, yo, I see it in the first time. I'm like, yo, you better call me. I want to see how mad you are. Uh, <laughs> he called me back. He wasn't that mad. I think that he realized that he probably shouldn't have done that just because everybody was texting him and all that and how much negative opinions that were tied to it but i mean he probably didn't know the ramifications of it at the time because it was only like an hour after and there wasn't there wasn't stories on cbs sports and nascar on nbc sports and you know real life sponsor quits real life driver over video game race right so that that's obviously unfortunate um I don't know. Well, it's it's a pretty unique situation. Nobody's ever seen that. But it's also the wild, wild west right now. Hey, friends. When it comes Hi, to Kelly. my race and sponsorship. She's got her new shoes on. Are you going for a walk? Yeah, I'm going to walk with our kid. There you go. You go, Great. girl. What was the driver chat like after Bristol? <clears throat> like I said, man, there is a distinct difference between the people over here who think it's a waste of time for the lack of incentives and consequences for spending all the time on it versus the people who think it's the greatest thing ever and we need to do it. We need to do just this instead of race in real life. Um, there's, there's really not anybody in the middle. There's a couple people in the middle. Um, 
but there's a lot of people who feel like sp spending 60 hours a week in their basement on their iRacing rig is a little bit too much. Uh, and then there's people who don't have anything else to do all day or a wife or families or kids they like spending time with that don't mind spending eight hours a day practicing on iRacing. That's right. The thing. It sounds like some teams would give anything to get to do it, and some teams aren't being asked to do it, and some teams are making their, their drivers do it. The teams that are asking their drivers to do it only because their sponsors want to be on TV, right? It's like if there's an opportunity to be on TV for essentially free, why wouldn't you jump on that opportunity? Right. And that's where we're at, you know, and now there's – there's only a limited amount of seats at the table and I race and gets to pick the people who sit at the table. So, um, you know, at first it was cup drivers cause they couldn't find enough people to fill the field at Homestead. Now everybody sees how great it's doing. All the sponsors are watching on TV. Like why isn't my guy on TV? Now everybody's like, okay, well now you gotta get in there as well. And I don't know. We'll see I, if it's offered to cup drivers first. I'd hate to think I couldn't get the invite going forward, but I don't know. I don't know. I just think it's weird that, like, if you don't – if you're not, like, all in on this, then you're, like, an enemy of the sport. And I just – I think a lot of people, like, myself included, Corey, I feel like this is probably how you feel. Like, you can appreciate that it's giving people something to watch, something to do, something to stay tuned to NASCAR over, but also think that it's silly. Like, to me, I just watch it, and I don't know. It's a video game to me, and I don't know why that's wrong. Yeah. Like, can it be a video game? Because there's that whole esports community that almost feels a little bit, I guess, empowered right now because that's the only thing they can do. Uh, you're you're in my you're in my you know right. uh, wheelhouse now, so you better right. bring your A game. Well, here's the thing: we we're not not all of us are choosing to do it because well, I haven't done it yet. I'm I'd be, I'm on a couple of days a night just to do it since there's nothing else to do right. um but the the reason why i'll be doing it on tv is because obviously i would have hopefully have the opportunity to do it to be on tv because why wouldn't you want to be on tv to keep yourself and your partners relevant right uh, but it's it's like you said it's weird if you're not if you don't be outspoken and say it's the greatest thing ever then you're just blasted on social media because everybody has an opinion and thinks it's the greatest thing ever right but I'm also one of the only guys that voice my opinion on how I truly feel, which people, it, it irritates me when people say on social media that all I've done is blast iRacing. Right. Have I ever blasted iRacing? I just say that, hey, it's not. I, it's just not your thing. My, my, I guess my beef with it up until now, up until three weeks ago, because it was the only, it, now it's the only thing to do. Before that, I didn't agree with NASCAR using their platform and partners and social media to push esports more than their home track stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like they were putting more effort and resources towards esports than the people who are actually spending time in their garage working on their modified or late model. And those short tracks are struggling right now. That's how we get fans to actually come to the track. You get them interested in going to their local short track, whether it be dirt or asphalt. Then when the big show comes in town, they go, right? You don't expect people to watch eatnascar.com. Right. Watch a Canon race on iRacing. When the race comes in town, they're not going to do it because they're going to sit there on their computer and phone and watch something else, right? Because you have it's a game. Like, the game. they're going to stay home and play World of Something Warcraft else. or whatever it is. Right. You have to get people excited about racing. The smells, the feel, the community of it in the stands, the racetrack lemonade, which is great, by the way. You have to get them to the track. Oh. Uh-oh. Corey's gone. What happened? I don't know. I like Frozen Corey, though. Yeah, me too. Daryl, anything you want to say? <laughs> I'm just listening. This is riveting. Right. 
it's all very weird. Alexa, you're gonna have to edit the shit out of this one. Well, maybe this would be a good time to take a commercial break. Yeah, he just tried to re-add himself, and now he's on his iPhone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have two Corys. Oh, no. So my computer died, and now I'm back, and apparently my background on my phone is race car. You're a nerd. Here, here we are. I wonder how long until it, like, makes you go away. Oh, there I, it goes. <laughs> I like having two Corys here. That's wow. nice. Can you, can you see me just fine? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Man, Corey. I was on a roll too. My computer died on me right mid mid rant. You weren't yeah, on a roll. Great. I was on a roll. That was the slowest rant I've ever been a part of. <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about. I forgot now, but. Exactly. I think we were done. Yeah, we were done. Okay. Is there anything else you need to say about it, Corey? Because you're all over the place. I am all over the place. Well, there's just so many layers to it, right? There's. I don't think so. There is. Yeah, because you can argue that it is your work right now because you're paid to be a race car driver, and there's race car drive. There's people that drive race cars that have opportunity to drive fake race cars on TV. So why wouldn't you do that? Uh, you can argue you aren't that invited. That's a whole nother point. I'm saying the guys that the guys that are doing it. That's the thing. I, I was that's the that's where I was going to go. I I get criticized because people think that I shit talk i racing, which I never shit talked i racing. I've always said that the it's as close as you can get to the real life if you're just a general person. Mm. I've never said that it sucked. I've never said that it's stupid. Never said that. I wouldn't do it. If it sucked and it was stupid, I have an account and I race on it three nights a week. I just never agreed with how NASCAR pushed that more so than they helped out their short tracks. But that's a whole nother topic. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm the only, I get this bad rap because I'm the only one outspoken thinking, speaking for the majority of people who don't speak their mind. And right. funny how, it's funny how in the group chat, everybody's outspoken about how it is and what they think about it. There's only about three guys that are really like gung ho about it. And you can probably figure Daddy, out which, William. <laughs> the guys who are benefiting financially from it, or the guys that don't have anything else to do but spend time to get good eye racing, right? The guys that have like families and don't want to invest 60 hours a week to get good at it would rather a different way to, or a different structure to limit practice time but you can't do it. That's just the way the platform's set up. So um, I get a bad rap because I guess I'm actually the voice for not, I'm not taking it off myself. A lot of it is just my opinion, but it seems to be the more I read the driver chat, a collective thought. Um, and everybody thinks just, I'm the I race and hater. I'm not the I race and hater. I think it's a great platform and it's great now because it's a platform to get you as a driver and uh, our partners out there is, and stay relevant. Listen, there's a belief online that you, that Denny invited you and you were like stuck your nose up at it. And all I'm trying to get you to say, cause it's the truth is Denny invited you, but I racing didn't invite you. So you couldn't have raced even if you wanted to that week. Yeah, we talked about that the other week. Denny didn't invite me. Denny just said, hey, we've been hearing for years, your cars are junk. Now's your time to do it with on equal playing fields. Well. Hey, I would jump in and do it if I got the invite. I haven't I got the invite yet. That's what I'm trying to explain. That's it. People don't understand that you weren't, it wasn't like you had an opportunity to do it and you did not do it. No, I haven't declined the offer. Right. I declined the offer for Saturday night to race against every other Tom, Dick, and Harry because I don't race against those guys. I race against the guys that are on TV every Sunday and I get paid to do it. And I'm 22nd in points and beating half of them. You so, big them. Huh? You big time those guys on Saturday. A little bit, but hey, why, like, no thanks. Thanks, but no thanks is what I said in email. And, and it ultimately panned out where Ford wouldn't let me race anyways because it's a Chevy. So it actually saved me from looking like a complete dick. But that's, it's just a weird, it's a weird thing right now. You got I, just people hate, 
that it's April 7th and we have to spend our time talking about it. You know what I mean? Nobody wishes we were talking about real life racing more than me right now. But eventually we'll get, get, get back going. I don't know. If we keep doing this via Zoom for th three more weeks, we're not literally going to have anything to talk about at all. Nothing. Nothing. Lauren, what are you working on? It's got to be more interesting than this. I'm uh, clipping my cuticles. Definitely <laughs> more exciting. Because I, I have to get myself home manicures now. That's what's happening. Nobody can get their hair done. Nobody can get their nails done. All these yeah, girls are. You guys are going to see what I really look like. It's going to be like a reverse Shrek where I start off like Princess Fiona and I end up like the ogre at the end. What are you doing, Corey LaJoy? I'm trying to get my phone situated. I'm just... I wore a mask to the grocery store this week for the first time. I wore a mask to Lowe's the other day. Where did you get your mask? Me? Yeah. I had a guy give me some. Wow. Wow. I've had a couple too. We actually had some for like painting at the shop, so I just, I just, uh, I just stole it. Well, let's take a break. Can we just not come back. I need to refill my cheese dip. We'll take a break and come back with more Sunday money. I'm not sure why. <laughs> just, just, just cut it. <laughs> And we're back, just trying to end this dumpster show of a fire we have going on right now. <laughs> um, we were just going to talk about what have we been eating. I was we were in the break. We were talking about um, what we've been, uh, or we were talking about dad bods of some sort because Daryl called somebody a daddy, which I don't really know what that meant. Um, <laughs> I guess that means he looks good. I but, was just saying, ladies like that particular broadcaster. I don't know. You you kind of licked your lips after you said "daddy," which is kind of weird. Um, <laughs> then I I, You're I chimed in. Cheese stuck in this beard, man. Um, I think that's what it was. You're getting what? I, macaroni and cheese. When I eat it, it gets stuck in the beard. Dude, my beard. Been eating? So long. No, we've been eating really good, but going to the grocery store is proving very stressful these days. Yeah. There's I got to go to the grocery store. I'm out of beer, which is a travesty. My beer intake, have you seen the graphs? I'm sure everybody's seen the graphs of the climb of cases in the United States, the exponential curve that we're talking about. That's uh -huh. been my beer intake as well. Like, this is what it was before <laughs> this quarantine, and then it starts day one. Day 14, it's like four a day Yeah. on a Monday when I'm paying. They're addicted to Natty Light seltzers. I'm, like, dating a – sorority girl over here <laughs> hey you can drink like 12 of them and not even feel anything but you're still yeah. hammered at the same time right and he's talking about the calories i'm like oh my god andrew is drinking natty light seltzers yeah he's like addicted to like trulies and all those things they're so like, refreshing oh, too much for me he sat on our back porch with his feet in the baby pool drinking Truly's and Natty Light Seltzers on Saturday and got sunburned. You're going to get that a That sounds like the life. He is a redneck. Corey, no, he's not a redneck. Rednecks don't drink seltzers. No, true. He just guys, drink Natty Light. Are you guys watching anything good? Is there anything to pass the time besides, you know, you know? I think well, after the Tiger King thing blew up, I haven't found anything else that I've been enjoying. It? Yeah. Oh, good. There's that nothing that Carol Baskin. There's nothing that beats that meets the bar of the craziness of that show. Right. That is the ultimate binge TV show that I've ever seen. Like it keeps you can't not you can't not stop watching. Mm -mm. And yeah, I just the problem is with with our schedule right now. We can't really watch a movie because by the time we watch a movie, she's got to go upstairs to pump. We got to change the baby diaper, so we never finish it. So we're always like like through like half like eight movies watching halfway and it kind of sucks. But um, I think Kelly's watched every episode of SVU uh, three times over now, so I know what happens. All the characters, I already know the plot lines before they even happen. I've already seen them about four times. Mm. SVU'd out. 
yeah, I don't have anything. Maybe people can tell us what they're watching so that I can get some, uh, some inspiration. What does Andrew like to watch? I'm, well, he's watching Ozark. You don't so, want that's an awesome show. Love it. I don't it. like it. Love it. Lauren, no. I love Jason Bateman and that. I just watch world. Bubble Guppies all day long. Lauren, Ozark is an hour long. Where are you when he's watching Ozark? Um, upstairs, giving the baby a bath. You make him watch it by your, it's supposed to be together. You watch it together and you look at each other and go, did you see what just happened? No, I don't like it. I don't like how dark all the scenes are. Mm. That's the only thing. I just can't get on board. It's a good show. It's hard to watch shows as a couple, especially right now, because like I said, everybody's cleaning the house, doing this, changing diaper. It's impossible to watch a show right now together. Yeah. Because if I get an hour to watch a show, she can, she doesn't, right? So then she's behind or vice versa. Right. So we just don't even do it. Right. Um, Alexa, what are you watching, Alexa? You got to tell us what you're watching. We need advice. I started watching Game of Thrones because I never did when it was on TV. I don't get it. Thank I don't you. understand. Well, it's just That's a lot of sex hard. and a lot of killing. I'm... Halfway through season two. I'm starting to now just recognize the characters and what they're doing, but I can't tell you their names. They all look like the same old white man that they cast in every single role. And that's what everyone says. And like, I watch it and my boyfriend's seen it. And so I'll ask him questions and he's getting annoyed that I'm asking him so many questions, but I don't understand it. I know, but... Uh, that's season one and two. It's about to like, it's about to, you're at this part of the roller coaster, you know? It's about I to. I hope I get up. it. Cause it's just, there's so many people. I can't pronounce their names. They all look the same. It's I like clans, the Lannisters. The, just, yeah, just keep going. It's good. I'm struggling. Lauren, would you ever watch Game of Thrones? No, that's also not my kind of show. Beverly Hills Housewives comes out in just a couple days. Yeah, maybe I'll have to get on board with that. It's pretty good for you. You would like it. No, thanks. Good. Are there any daddies on there? Yeah, probably. Well, there's a lot to eat. So basically everybody's just eating and watching shows. That's all we're doing these days. Right. And drinking, drinking beer and eating ice cream. That's pretty much what my, my diet consists of right now. Okay, guys, we're back. I want to remind you about the Break Best Bundle, 15% off. O'Reilly Auto Parts will help make your auto repair, maintenance, and restoration projects easier so when your car isn't stopping like it used to. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you find brake parts and supplies that you need to do the job right the first time. Now, for a limited time, save 15% when you buy any set of Break Best pads and two break best rotors. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Nice read, nailed it. Good job. Hey guys, we do need to pick our clutch performer of the week. Man, I picked Bubba. Why? <laughs> you picked Bubba as the clutch performer of the week? Yeah. I picked Jimmy Johnson. Why? Because there's no way he wants to be sitting there doing this right now. He has a sweet oh, house. He's got fun kids. I can promise you he doesn't life. want to do it. We've, we've had conversations as yes. why he doesn't. What, what's today, actually? What's the date? Uh, uh, today's uh, seven. seven. So tomorrow, NASCAR's making 4-8 Jimmy Johnson Day. So everybody's going to be posting videos and pictures about how they love Jimmy Johnson on Jimmy Johnson Day. Oh, wow. Well, I, I think he's the performer because this is not his wheelhouse and he's being, a, he's being a fun participant. He's still showing up and doing it, even though of all people, he does not need to be doing it. That's true. And he, That's yeah, he, he, keeps like, he keeps like soldiering it out because he's like terrible at it, but he keeps showing up and doing it, doing what the IndyCar. Car. I, don't, I, I can't figure out if he has an IndyCar simulator and a NASCAR simulator. I think he's got two separate ones. That's a little bit. That's a little bit much. Meanwhile, Timmy Hill has a laptop and like a 
toy wheel you can get at Toys R Us and they're smoking everybody. Keep it up. <laughs> me, so. Well, Lauren, should we pick Bubba or Jimmy? We'll go with Jimmy. That sounds nice. Yeah, the Clutch Jimmy Performer of the Week. The Clutch Performer of the Week is brought to you by Clutch Coffee Bar in Mooresville, North Carolina. You can order Clutch Coffee Beans online and have them shipped directly to you. Go to clutchcoffeebar.com. Congratulations, Jimmy Johnson. You are our Clutch Performer of the Week. I'm Good sure job. he's pumped. Yeah, I'm sure he's pumped up. All, All right. right. I go, I go feed and change his poopy diaper, so wish me luck. Bye, guys. Good luck. Have Bye. a great week.